Hi guys, I'm on a little tiling job today and I thought I'd bring you along to show you how to set out and lay a diamond tiling pattern. We're going to go over setting out when an area is not square because this little porch here is not very square at all. So we'll go over how to centre the area and how to set that area out. Before we get started, make sure you're a subscriber. Hit the little subscribe button down below because I have loads of content on the channel already and plenty to come throughout 2022. And make sure you smash the like button because that really helps this video get out there to the masses and reach more people on YouTube. So we've got this little porch area to do today. It's a bit rough and ready, a bit uneven, but it'll really improve the look of the front door area. First thing you need to do when you're tiling a diamond pattern, in fact any tiling, is to create a centre line along the area that you're tiling. But you don't just make any centre line, you take two or three measurements and then you half each of those measurements to make your centre line. That way if the wall's running out or something like that, you're not going to get dodgy cuts either side. So the first of our three measurements, we'll have one at the front edge here, which is one, three, four. So we'll take half of that measurement, which is 67, make a little mark at 67. We'll take a second measurement halfway along, which is also one, three, four. So again, take half of that measurement, which is 67, and make a mark. We'll then take a third measurement right at the back of the area, which is 1335, so half of that is 66.75, so it's pretty much near on the 67, so it's not actually a million miles out. So we now have three marks, now we need to join all of those three marks together and we'll have a perfect centre line. Now obviously we're working on a concrete slab outdoors. If you're indoors working on a floor indoors it's probably going to be a little easier to do and a little easier to make your mark with a pencil. So the next measurement we'll take, we'll create a line that's perpendicular to this line that we've made here. So we'll take a measurement halfway along that line because we need our next mark to be 90 degrees to that line. So 709 centimetres. So we now have a mark halfway along our centre line and we now need to create a line perpendicular to our centre line. It has to be 90 degrees off of that centre line. So you can use a square for that and make a line at 90 degrees. So you can see we have our centre line and we have a line at perfectly 90 degrees from the centre line. And you'll see why that's important in a moment. Now with any tiling, setting out is one of the most important bits of the job. So I like to dry lay the tiles, get an idea in my mind of where any of the cuts are gonna be before I put any adhesive down or anything like that. There's nothing worse than getting to the end of a tiling job and you've got some dodgy little cuts around the side or uneven cuts, or even just something that doesn't look very visually pleasing. And that is where this centre line, or this little cross here that we've made, comes in really handy with diamond tiling. Now obviously the tiles are quite big for this area. It would have been handy if I had some smaller tiles to show you with. What you need to do is lay your first tile with each point on a centre line on this cross here. So lay all four corners so they're touching on a line like so. So we have a line on each four of the corners and that will be our starting point. Now we can plan where the other tiles are going to go. So our next tile is going to go there and then we'll start to work in that direction. We always lay the centre tile first. In this case these are preset two mil spacers so we're going to use two mil spacers to get our gap exactly right and we can just keep on dry laying based on that centre tile. So now you've got a few of these dry laid you can actually work out if your cuts are going to be perfectly even or not, which they are. So we know all of the cuts are going to be perfectly even and it's going to be pleasing to look at. We'll mix up a bit of adhesive now. You want it to be about the consistency of porridge. And do a little bit at a time. If you're a beginner, it takes a little bit of time to work out to work out the ratio of water to adhesive. If you put too much water in the bottom to start with, you might end up with a massive bucket full. So when you're a beginner, do a little bit at a time and see how you get on. And don't mix too quickly or you're gonna get loads of air bubbles. So 
So we've got the consistency we want there. You can see, not too runny, not too thick. And if you're a beginner, don't use rapid set like I am because you won't get much open time to actually work out your tiling before it'll set. So I'd use a slow set or a medium set adhesive if you're a DIYer or a beginner. So we can lift this tile out of the way now. And we can put some adhesive down to start laying that first tile. Now you see some people dot and dab, in any case don't do that, but especially not outdoors because any water that gets under the tile will freeze and end up popping or cracking the tile. So what we want to do is make some nice straight lines in the adhesive, that way when we lay the tile, we push the tile down, the air can travel and escape out of the ends of the lines in the adhesive. Now we're going to lay this first tile. We've got our nice lines for the air to escape from that adhesive so that we get a good contact. But when we're using tiles over 300 by 300, these are 450 by 450, what I like to do is back butter the tile. That gives it a really good contact onto the adhesive we have there. So just get yourself a little float and, and just put a very thin layer over the back of the tile. I do this with any large format tile. It only has to be a very thin amount, you don't want loads on there. And that will make the contact a lot better onto the adhesive. And now we need to line the corners up with our marks again. And we lay that tile onto that adhesive. When you put your first tile down, what you want to do is just lift it back up again. So don't put it too far down. Just lift it back up and you'll be able to see what sort of contact you're getting. So you can see there you're getting a good contact. The reason you do that with the first tile is because you don't want to lay the whole lot down, get to the end and find out you didn't have very good contact. Right, so we can now go ahead and relay that first tile on our marks. What we have here on this porch is a bit of a runoff. So I need to keep that runoff so the water can run away from the door. Obviously if you're working on a floor indoors, you want to make sure it's perfectly level. Now with this first tile, that'll be critical to your level for the rest of the tiles. Unless you're using a tile leveling system where you can pull those tiles up and down, which I normally use for large format tiles. I'll put a link in the description where you can grab a tile leveling system. But we'll do this the old fashioned way make sure we've got a good contact, make sure that we've got the level that we want and we can then work from this centre tile outwards. So I've got the runoff that I want there. I need to make sure my level's perfect the other way around. Just go round and push that tile down onto the adhesive, give it a little wiggle and check that your tile is on those marks that we made earlier. Once you've laid your first tile and it's nice and level and you're happy with it, what you now want to do is just clear off all the elder adhesive, chuck that back in your bucket and you can use that again. If you get any adhesive on the tiles, just wipe it off as you go along. You don't want loads of rapid set going off all over the nice face of the tiles because it'll be really hard to clean off later on. Now we need to work out the cut for the next tile. Once you've made your cut and you're happy with it, you just keep on laying those tiles and making sure that they're nice and leveled off the first tile that we laid. Get your adhesive down and then lay your next tile roughly. And just start to manoeuvre that tile into position. Any high spots push them down harder. Any low spots should then come up as you push the high spots down. Just keep on adjusting the tile up or down so that you get the perfect level. So we now have three tiles laid. What you normally do is you leave all these little cuts until the end and then you'll come in and fill them once you've done the main body of the work. I want to get this front edge done though because I need to get the trim on. The reason I'm doing it this way is because this edge is knackered and I'm going to be building that out with some adhesive to get it flat. The alternative 
would have been re-screed in all of this, maybe cutting it back flush so that we got the tile exactly flush. But the property's being sold and they didn't want to do that, so we're just going to make this good. Once you've got the main body of tiles down and you're happy, you can go around and do all these little cuts. Once you've got all your little cuts around the edge, it should look something like that. All I've got to do now is finish the step at the front, put a few tiles on the front of that, but that gives you an idea of how you tile a diamond pattern, and all we need to do now is grout it. Before we go grout and just pull out all of the little spaces, and if you do have any adhesive, that's leaked through the gaps into your grout line. Just gently dig that adhesive out because you don't want any raised bits when it comes to grouting. So let's mix up some grout. There's a few general rules to go by when you're mixing up your grout. Use mineral water. The water in the tap will have lime scale in it. When the grout dries, you can sometimes see that lime scale and it'll produce patches, mostly in darker grout. So just use some cheap mineral water. A little water goes a long way. You, you'll be surprised. You don't need as much grout as you think and you certainly don't need as much water as you think. If you put loads of water in, you're going to find you'll be going up to the shop and buying another bag of grout. Let's get mixing. You want your speed on low, you don't want to do this too quick. Now you want a clean bucket with mineral water in it for your washing down. You want a clean grout and sponge and a grout and spreader or a grout and float. Get some grout on your float and work it into the gaps. And as you go along, just take off any excess. Pick small areas and work that grout in as you go. When the grout starts to go chalky, we can come along with our sponge and we can clean the excess grout off. You'll have to do this a few times. The first time, make sure you do it very gently because we don't want to be digging any grout out of our grout joints. Best way to do that, grab your wet sponge and run across the lines and don't push too hard. If you run along the joint, you're likely to drag some of that grout out. So now you've cleaned this off once, you've got the worst of the grout off the tiles. You'll be left with this chalky, horrible look, but no big lumps of grout. Now what we need to do is go over it again with some more clean water. Again, make sure you take care not to dig out any of the grout. The end result we're looking for is for the grout to be just below the surface of the tile. And we want it to be nice and smooth with no jagged edges or bubbles or pulls in the grout. If you do pull any of the grout out of the joints, make sure you fix it now, because it's a lot easier to fix that now than it is later down the line. So you'll now find that your grout has gone hard enough for you to run your finger over without pulling out any of the grout. Once the grout is hard enough to work with, we can just get a nice wet sponge and start taking off all of that leftover dust from the tiles. Doing that, it might take a few attempts to get the rest of the dust off the tiles. Once you've got the majority of the dust from the tiles, just let them dry off a bit and then use a clean microfiber cloth to just buff the area. Once you're happy with the end result and you've buffed up them tiles to get all the dust off, you can then go ahead and seal them edges with some silicon sealant, either clear, white, or you can even get colors to match the grout. And that will just finish the job off. So if the video helped you out today, hit that like button for me because that really helps this video reach and help more people out there on YouTube just like you. And if you like DIY content in general, make sure you're subscribed. There'll be a little pop-up on the screen somewhere now because you're not gonna wanna miss all the content I've got to come throughout the rest of the year. And there's a new feature out on YouTube called Super Thanks. 
Think of it as a bit of a tip jar, and that tip money goes back into the channel to buy materials to make more videos for you guys at home. That's it from me, I've been the DIY guy, and I'll see you guys in the next one.